Canada, land of the maple leaf in the great white north. This is a vast country with a variety of cool to cold climates. Right now is climate time, and we begin our journey in British Columbia on the west coast of Canada, in the city of Victoria, British Columbia's capital. Victoria enjoys warm summer Mediterranean climate, featuring warm and dry summers and cool winters with moderate rain and occasional snow. August daily averages are 16 Celsius, 60 Fahrenheit, while January averages 5 Celsius, 41 Fahrenheit. Victoria is located on the island known as Vancouver Island. Vancouver Island enjoys warm summer Mediterranean climates in the south, starting in Victoria up the east coast to Nanaimo and up the west coast to Tofino, with the remainder of the island having an oceanic climate. This fine weather makes for some of Canada's best beaches, and Tofino, located here, is one of Canada's only surfing locations and one of the world's best. Without too much trouble, you can view humpback whales diving just off the Vancouver Island coast. Moving across the Georgia Strait and east, we come to the city of Vancouver, Canada's third largest city and British Columbia's largest. The city has an oceanic climate thanks to the effects of the warm waters of the Pacific Ocean. It rains in Vancouver almost continuously in the winter months, but the temperature stays moderate with winter averages of 3 Celsius 38 Fahrenheit. Summers are warm compared to many oceanic climates, averaging 18 Celsius 64 Fahrenheit in July. Backing up and moving into the interior of British Columbia. The interior of British Columbia begins on the west coast and ends in the Rocky Mountains. We are sure to come across some gorgeous grizzly bears. They love it here. The area generally has a high elevation with subarctic conditions at the peaks and warm summer humid continental conditions in the lower latitudes. In the lower altitudes. The Rocky Mountains at the borders of British Columbia and Alberta have a tundra climate where the temperature peaks above 0 Celsius 32 Fahrenheit at least one month per year, but average temperatures never exceed 10 Celsius 50 Fahrenheit. Moving up the west coast towards the north of British Columbia, the climate cools. The interior, this region, is largely subarctic, while the coast, to the west, has a mix of oceanic and subpolar oceanic climates up to the northern reaches of the Queen Charlotte Islands, located right here off the coast. The subpolar oceanic climate is similar to the oceanic climate we saw in Vancouver, except that the summers are cooler and shorter. Now we will move far north to the Yukon Territory north of British Columbia, just to the east of Alaska. The Yukon Territory is the land of the midnight sun and the gold rush of 1896 to 1899. The entirety of the Yukon is either subarctic, tundra, or ice cap conditions. Cougars are right at home in the subarctic landscape here in the south of the Yukon. The White Horse Valley, located here, shelters the city of White Horse, Yukon's capital, and gives it the warmest conditions in the Yukon. The average Daily temperature in Whitehorse is a high of 14 Celsius 57 Fahrenheit in July and a low of minus 15 Celsius 4 Fahrenheit in January. 
Moving to the east, we arrive at the Northwest Territories, which is largely subarctic except for tundra in the northern reaches along the Arctic Ocean, right here. What makes the climate of the tundra variety is that the average temperature never exceeds 10 Celsius 50 Fahrenheit, but peaks its head above an average temperature of 0 Celsius 32 Fahrenheit at least one month a year. The capital of Yellowknife, located just to the north of the Great Slave Lake, is at the colder end of the subarctic climate, with a January average of minus 25 Celsius, minus 14 Fahrenheit. Like all subarctic locales, summers here are short, but Yellowknife has the distinction of having the sunniest summers and springs of any city in Canada. Now we move to the east, to Nunavut. I'll give you some context here. This is Canada, and here we are in Nunavut. We started all the way down here in Victoria. This is truly the land of Santa Claus. With the exception of a small stretch of subarctic lands here at the southern tip, Nunavut is all tundra and ice cap climates. The ice cap climate is planet Earth's coldest, where no month has temperatures exceeding 0 Celsius 32 Fahrenheit. The capital city of Iqaluit, located here on Baffin Island, has a population of 7,000 and lies in the tundra climate zone. It enjoys a February average of minus 27 Celsius, minus 16 Fahrenheit. Here is King Willem Island. This is where the Franklin Arctic Expedition became trapped in the ice in 1846, with the crew abandoning ship a year later and ultimately all dying, mostly of hypothermia and starvation. This is not a comfy or cozy climate. Now we will move to northern Alberta and northern Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan is located here, and Alberta here, just to the east of British Columbia. The Arctic winds swing south into the northern reaches of these Canadian prairies, bringing subarctic conditions to these northern regions. Now moving south to southern Alberta, we come to the city of Calgary, just on the other side of these Rocky Mountains. Southern Alberta and southern Saskatchewan experience very dry conditions as a result of the rain shadow effect of these Rocky Mountains. This keeps warm, hot air and the resulting moisture to the west in British Columbia. But occasionally, these warm conditions burst across the mountains and radically warm southern Alberta, as much as 30 degrees Celsius in a single day. This is called a Chinook in the language of one of the First Nations peoples of the region. Here in southern Saskatchewan, the Chinooks don't make it, but the dry conditions do persist here. This region has a dry and sunny, cold, semi-arid climate with perfect conditions for wheat production, but is vulnerable to small changes in precipitation brought about by climate change. Now we will move to the east, to Manitoba and Canada's most populous province of Ontario. Manitoba and Ontario are largely subarctic in the north, around here, along the Hudson's Bay. And to the south, warm, summer, humid continental climate predominates.
the warm summer humid continental climate experiences at least one month below minus 3 Celsius, 26 Fahrenheit, and at least four months above 10 Celsius, 50 Fahrenheit, but never a month averaging a temperature above 22 Celsius, 71 Fahrenheit. There is even precipitation throughout the year. The majestic moose thrives in these conditions and lives a solitary life wandering the forests of Ontario and Manitoba. Now we move to the city of Toronto, which most viewers will be familiar with. This is Canada's largest and best known city. Right here, along the banks of Lake Ontario. It is at the warmest end of the warm summer, humid continental climate, enjoying a daily mean average just below minus 3 Celsius, 25 Fahrenheit in January, with warm summers bordering on an average temperature of 22 Celsius, 72 Fahrenheit in the balmy July summer. Now moving south to the southern tip of Ontario. In this Great Lakes region, the region bordering Michigan, there is a hot summer, humid, continental climate. With similar winters to Toronto, but slightly hotter summers, with the warmest month averaging above 22 Celsius, 71 Fahrenheit. Now we move to the east, to the province of Quebec. The French-Canadian heartland of Quebec includes warm summer humid continental conditions here in the south, including the city of Montreal located here, to the north the climate cools. Zeroing on Montreal itself. The island of Montreal. This is often a very humid region in the summer. Summer averages are similar to Toronto's, while January's are colder, with averages of minus 9 Celsius, 14 Fahrenheit. The national capital of Ottawa, Gatineau, known as the national capital region just to the west, shares a very similar climate to Montreal's. At Canada's eastern extreme, the maritime provinces of Newfoundland, here, New Brunswick, here, and Prince Edward Island, here, all experience a mix of subarctic and warm summer humid continental conditions. Winds off the Atlantic Ocean, located all over here, can moderate temperatures in comparison to inland Canada locations at the same latitudes, but also batter these provinces in epic winter snowstorms. Now, moving south to Nova Scotia, the most southerly maritime province. Nova Scotia experiences the most moderate climate in the Maritimes, with the capital city of Halifax, located here, experiencing January lows just slightly lower than Toronto's with minus 4 Celsius, 24 Fahrenheit. Now, at the southern tip of Nova Scotia, located here, Cape Sable Island enjoys the most moderate climate in Canada east of the Rocky Mountains, with an oceanic climate of minus 2 Celsius, 28 Fahrenheit in July, in January, and summer averages of 12 Celsius, 54 Fahrenheit. Imagine relaxing on these 
wonderful beaches of Cape Sable Island, absorbing the rays of the 12 degree summer sun, sipping on a clam digger, a favorite Canadian beverage. Cape Sable Island, truly Canada's Florida. Well, let's get back to a view of this vast and wonderful country. And I will take this opportunity to thank you for joining me on this journey across Canada. This video was made possible by public domain materials from NASA Whirlwind through the Marble Virtual Globe application and the Copen Climate Classification System. Please support this channel by sharing, subscribing, and getting the alerts as our journey across Mother Earth has only just begun.